If you're a woodworker, you have a lot of cast iron in your shop. And if you have a lot of cast iron, you probably have encountered rust. Now there's a lot of rust removal products on the market, but if you've run into some really deep rust where you have some pitting, uh, or maybe you're trying to restore your grandpa's old hand plane like this, um, you might need a more powerful solution. And so we are going to show you how to build a, an electrolysis tank to, to literally power away the rust from your cast iron. Electrolysis is a process for passing uh, an electric charge through a liquid solution and producing a chemical change in the oxidized iron. Uh, in English, basically it means it, it, it's a way to power the rust away without harming the uh, uh, unrusted metal underneath. So don't let uh, all our paraphernalia scare you. Looks like a mad scientist lab, but really it's a pretty easy setup to build this electrolysis tank. Now we'll start with a plastic tub. Um, it really doesn't really matter what you use. You could use a, a five gallon paint bucket as long as it's plastic. And we're gonna use uh, little short lengths of rebar as our electrodes. And now you can find these at the home center. They're already pre-cut and everything and we're going to attach these in each corner and you can see I've already drilled some holes here and we will pass uh, some copper wire through there to, to secure those in the corners. We've got the rebar in all four corners and these are going to act as anodes to draw the rust away from our part. Um, now the next thing I need to do is tie all four corners together with some wire and wire nuts. And so we've tied it together on three sides just to make sure that the current will pass through all four of our electrodes. So our next step is to fill this up with an electrolyte solution and we're going to fill it just below the uh, level of these copper ties uh, because we don't want to get the, the copper in our solution because electrolysis will turn them into a nasty green mess. So the first step is to fill this up with water. Now to make this water more conductive we're going to uh, mix in some laundry soda. So we're going to put in about a tablespoon for every gallon. So we have about 10 gallons in here, so we're gonna put in 10 tablespoons. And now this is uh, sodium carbonate, and it's not quite the same as baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, uh, but you can find this in your big box store or wherever you find laundry detergent. So now we're just gonna stir that in, get all these lumps dissolved here. So now we need to suspend our rusty part here in the center of the solution in, you know, between the, our, our anodes here. And so I've wrapped this in some steel wire, not copper. Remember, copper makes a mess. I'm gonna just use a little cross member here that I have a hanger on. And we will just hook that on my cross member there and we will dunk it in the tank. Now we want to power our uh, electrolysis tank. And to do that, we're gonna use a, a standard car battery charger here. I have it set on a uh, trickle charge, which is uh, generally the, the two amp setting on, a, on 12 volt. At the moment, it is unplugged. And notice I have it with some separation from the tank itself, so if the water should spill, we're not in any electrocution danger. Now, we're gonna uh, attach the negative or black lead to our part and we're going to attach the positive or red lead to one of our rebars and remember those are all tied together and now we just plug her in. Now if everything is connected properly in a few seconds we should start seeing bubbles rising up off of the uh, uh, part in here and off of our anodes and that indicates it's working. 
So while this is working, let me tell you about a few cautions. Those bubbles you see are pure oxygen and pure hydrogen. The, the water is actually being cracked apart into, into its component um, parts. So you want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area with uh, no risk of uh, sparks. Uh, because if, if that should uh, gather at the ceiling, um, you could have uh, a big explosion on, on your hands. Obviously, we're putting electric charge through this. It's not much. It's a little trickle charge. But don't risk shock by grabbing the electrodes or dipping your hands in the water while this is plugged in. Always unplug before it, you make any adjustments to your setup. Along with keeping copper out of the solution, you also want to keep stainless steel out of the solution. While it's a good conductor and a good anode, uh, it does actually break down into some pretty nasty stuff. Um, the alloys in stainless steel will uh, saturate your water with what's called hexavalent chromium. And if you don't know what that is, think Aaron Brockovich. This stuff's really nasty, carcinogen, and, uh, and potentially legal to uh, have on hand and dispose of. And keep in mind, along with rust, this process is likely to remove any uh, paint or japanning on your tool. So if you have a mind that you want to keep some of that, this might not be the process for you. Now we'll just leave it for a couple hours to remove all that rust. Don't worry about overdoing it. It's a self-regulating process. Once the rust is removed, the, it stops working on the iron. So let's see what it looks like. First thing, unplug your car charger. Now we can take off the leads. And there it is. You can see that rust has turned to black sludge where it was, uh, where it was on the tool. We will go ahead and take this over to the sink and get this scrubbed off even better here. Well, and there you have it. The, we've gotten all the deep rust off. Um, you might want to put a light coast, uh, coat of uh, paste wax on here to keep some flash rust, rust off, but this plain body is ready to start lapping and restoring.